let's dig in a little deeper into that first conversation about GDP. Your GDP forecast is that we're going to be negative, a zero or slightly negative. And that's a bit of a hedge there. I, I kind of feel like forcing you to take a side, but I'll give it to you for today. Um, so you're saying zero, slightly negative. And, you know, there's a lot of data showing this. I I'll, I'll give you my prediction, um, which is I think that actually you're going to have a surprise on the upside uh, in, I don't think we're going to go into official uh, uh, territory of a recession, which means we're going to be slightly above zero. It doesn't mean we're going to be like doing uh, 2% or nothing crazy like that. I think we're going to be slightly above zero. But I do think Q1 of 2024, you'll get a negative GDP signal. That's what I think, because uh, I agree with you on the leg. So anyways, I'm just giving you the JG prediction because, you know, you know me, I got to balance out the Patrick predictions. Remember, like share subscribe put it in the comments what you like about the show even what you don't like about the show let us know let's get those algorithms going okay well that's fine but i'm going to rain on your prey just a little bit and probably we're both right to some degree but the one thing that we have to always go back to is that it's regional not national and every province will probably be in that zero or slightly negative except for alberta and i know you're going to love that comment because uh it's just what it is and it's not national, it's regional. Okay, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll get into the different regions as we get into the show. But I think one of the things that's interesting about this, Patrick, and often I do want to remind people of this, especially during these kinds of economic times, one of the things you will constantly see is they put out a statement, here's the GDP, and then months later, they revise it. They actually did this in July of this year, Patrick, where it was negative GDP, and then they revised it up because if that would have stayed negative in Q2 of 2023, and then Q3 of 2023, we know was negative, we would have already, uh, uh, you know, been in a recession, technical recession. Now, a lot of, lot of people are already arguing we're, we're in a recession regardless. And there's actually a, a narrative out there of what's called a rolling recession, where kind of a recession is going through all the different industries. Um, and that's kind of an interesting narrative as well, Patrick. So, Funny, fun fact is I'm just saying that oftentimes the stats can comes out with their numbers and then they revise those numbers. So don't be surprised if they come out with either a negative uh, GDP and then a, a month later they revise it to zero or revise it up a little bit, whatever the case may be. It happens all the time is my point, Patrick. Well, I think that you, you hit on a couple of really key points, not the least of which is that when you look at the different industries, many industries are struggling, others are not struggling. And that's the differentiation right there is that it is in some regions right now, you're thinking if you're in a particular industry, you're feeling like it's a recession. Now, let's consider when you're in the real estate industry, for example, if you're a realtor, you're saying this is a recession as a realtor. I mean, the number of realtors that have quit, for example, being realtors and are out looking for other jobs in the Toronto GTA region overall is, you know, kind of epic in terms of the spike. But I want to go back to one thing here, JG, which is what are we talking about all this stuff for? When we look at the housing industry overall, it's really nothing has been happening. It's the same story right now. It's now into month after month, not enough inventory. Prices aren't coming down, although they're coming down in some regions off of peaks. You know, it's not like they have this huge crash that everybody's been talking about. And so when you look at the housing, it's like much ado about nothing. It's the same story. Now we have to look at what's economically happening so that we can say, OK, well, where is real estate going? What's going to happen into the future as we kind of chug away? It's a pretty boring real estate market right now. But from an investor point of view, we have to keep focused on the economics so that we can make decisions as to what we're going to do in the real estate world. Well, that's what I was going to say, Patrick, is is funny enough is it, for many it's boring, but it's actually really not boring because this is where kind of the the things really start to shape and investors that have their nose to the grindstone and that are in the market will make some very significant moves as the economy starts to move into the next phase of the cycle that it's going through. But I want to point this out, Patrick, and it's this chart here I'm putting on the screen, which is Oxford Economics, uh, which is a you know an economics company we follow quite closely. They believe that the Bank of Canada has been overestimating the economy strengths um, and they are predicting, actually, the Bank of Canada predicted essentially a 0% 
Q4 2023, 0% GDP. They're also expecting 0% GDP in Q1 of 2024, whereas Oxford Economics is expecting a contraction of 0.3% in Q4 and 0.4% in Q1. Interesting who is going to be actually right, uh, because soon we're going to have these numbers. Well, you know, I heard economists the other day, well, not quite an economist, but somebody who's in the world of looking at what's happening economically across the country and into the U.S. as well. And his comment was very interesting. He says, if you really want to know what's going on with the economy, go look out your window. And I think that was an interesting point that they made, because when you look at, and we've seen some of these charts, JG, when we look at the different income levels, if you're in a certain income level, you're in a recession, you're struggling, you're trying to make ends meet, you're uh, pairing up, you're moving back home with family, or you're bringing roommates in to be able to afford to live. When we look at the cost of living, it's up. So if you're in certain income level, yeah, it's a big challenge. And we can't deny what's happening in every city across this country, which is the degree of homelessness. Now, historically, that homelessness represented, you know, mental health, it represented, well, it still does, but it was really about mental health, it was drug addiction and the the crisis of you know opioids opioids for example but what's happening today is that families are literally having to move onto the street into these tent cities and they're tr they're going to work they're actually got jobs but they can't afford a place to live ah! so if you're part of that cohort that particular demographic that income level yeah you're in the middle of a recession some would argue a depression so look out the window and you start to say, well, you know something, there's some real challenges going on out in the world today. Now, why are we talking about uh, GDP is important, Patrick? Because some people are listening to this thinking, what does GDP have to do with anything? Well, folks, as you know, many of you are attached to what's going to happen with interest rates. Are interest rates going to go up? Are interest rates going to go down? What's happening on the next interest rate an announcement? Well, a lot of that's going to have to do with what happens with GDP. Is GDP going to be flat? Is it going to be negative? Are we going to go into a recession? So on and so forth. And what's interesting, Patrick, is that, you know, as you've pointed out, yes, off the peaks, and I'm talking the, the COVID crazy prices peak, prices have come down. But I also think that the Bank of Canada, as well as the rest of the, uh, the economy, is starting to realize, listen, there's a floor to real estate, and we've hit that floor in many, 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 many markets here. There might be a few that are still going down. In fact, some markets and the real estate sentiment is really starting to pick up. And what's interesting is now they're in a really tight bind because they know if they lower interest rates, what's going to happen, Patrick, is that real estate is going to start to pick back up, which is going to be great for us investors on one hand. But on the other hand, uh, you know, they're afraid it's going to fuel uh, more inflation, which we're going to talk about inflation next, because we've seen in this chart here that the real estate sentiment is really starting to pick back up, Patrick. So the point is, is that the Bank of Canada has been in a very difficult situation. They continue to be in a very difficult situation on what they're going to do with interest rates. Well, it's interesting around market sentiment. We've talked about this before, and I actually can see where sentiment's going to shift again. You know, we talk about interest rates, we get into that in a minute. But when you look at the number of people that believe there's going to be cuts in interest rates, people are front running, they're saying, okay, let's get into the market now before prices go up. I want to get in because interest rates are going to go down. And that means prices are going to go up. So I'm going to get in now. They're literally trying to front run the interest rate and the shift that they think is going to happen, which is interest rates coming down. I think we're going to be uh, a little disappointed in that area. Oh, interesting. We'll talk about that next uh, with interest rates and where you think they're going. Another Patrick prediction. My gosh, that's two Patrick predictions in a single show. I'm so excited. But interesting what you're saying, Patrick, about front running the market, because I got a call recently, as you know, and I've said on this show before, I had a property I put up for sale in November, which according to this chart of the real estate sentiment was the low point of real estate sentiment. Boy, I couldn't have timed that any worse. But uh uh, the point is, is that I took that off the market mid-January and I rented it out. I said, you know what? I need to create a little breathing space. We always advocate real estate investors have uh, a second and third and a fourth exit option. Our exit option was, listen, let's just take a break. Let's just put it on the market. Let's rent it out short term. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll sell it uh, when the market improves. So that's exactly what we did. And we got a, a great tenant in there until June of this year. What's interesting though, Patrick, my property wasn't even off the market four weeks. I got a call on Friday that people want to see it. It's not even on the market. 
but there's so little inventory on the market that some people are calling and saying, listen, could we see that property? We know it was on the market. We know you took it off the market. We'd like to see it. I would like to see it. And that's pretty fascinating, Patrick, because I got to say that's never happened to me before where there's such short supply on the market that people are actually going around looking at properties that are not even on the market anymore. And it's interesting. These people are so serious that I'm told they're going to be submitting an offer, which is pretty cool. <laughs> well, good luck with that one. And uh, we'll see where it all goes. But it is it is a very interesting time in that regard when it comes to the supply side of the equation. Just not enough to go around. OK, let's talk about your predictions with interest rates. And Patrick, where do you think it's going to go, buddy? Tell me, where is it happening? Well, you know, something it is interesting, isn't it? Because when we look at where and what it is that the Bank of Canada is trying to do, and it's everybody's looking for a answer. What is the cause and what is behind it all? When we look at an economy, it's so nuanced. There's so many different things. Many have forecasts. And when we look at certain aspects of bond yields and they've actually kind of worked in rate decreases into first, it was early into 2024, as in the first half of 2024. Now it's the back half of 2024. My, I'm looking at it and I'm going, you know something, I just don't see them uh, lowering rates very much before the end of 2024. There's a part of me that's going, ah, I don't know. And this is just my opinion, of course. Nobody knows where the hell rates are going. But if I'm looking at it, I'm going, I don't think they're going to drop rates. I think that the economy, from their perspective, they're going to be late in terms of, do I think they should lower them? Yes. Do I think they're going to? I don't think so, because the Bank of Canada has a tendency uh, historically of being late. And what hasn't showed up yet is the unemployment. And I still think that we're going to see another uptick in unemployment. And until we start to see that uptick in unemployment, I think the Bank of Canada is not going to get in front of it and they're going to react to it as opposed to being proactive on it. And they're not going to lower rates much. I think I think we'll be lucky if we get a quarter point by the end of 2024. That's just my view. And I hope I'm wrong. So do I. Actually, everybody, folks, everybody. you're listening to this. Please put a comment in there and, and tell Patrick that you hope he's wrong. Please put a comment in there, at least for my sake. Let's just get the energetic gods on our side here and hope Patrick is wrong in his Patrick <laughs> prediction. Listen, I'm hoping I'm wrong. I've got mortgages too, lots of them. So I'm hoping <laughs> I'm wrong. Now, have a look, folks. I'm going to put up on the screen right now. These dates are the interest rate announcement dates. And you can see here, March 6th is the next announcement by the Bank of Canada. Any date that has a star beside it, that's when they do a mon uh, monetary policy report. So that's essentially when they start to tune up their monetary policy. And, and I think, in my opinion, Patrick, and is they seem to make bigger moves around the dates with the stars. That's because they are adjusting for the, f for the future. So March 6th, because in January 24th, they specifically said they plan to hold essentially is what they, what they said. They were just kind of holding firm for now. I don't see any big changes in March 6th. But on the next show, we will be just before, I, I believe we are shooting the next Rain It In show on March 5th. So we're going to be right on the cusp of, uh, of this announcement. Again, I think that things are just going to stay status quo for the first half of this year. I don't think we're going to see much in any way until we start to see something unfold differently in the real estate market. And, you know, we're going to talk about short term rentals. But, you know, the the bank or sorry, the our federal government believes that these and our provincial governments believe that the changes that they made in short term rentals are going to shift what happens in the real estate market. We're going to find out that won't happen quickly either. <laughs> Lots uh, coming up, folks, uh, on GDP interest rates. It's going to be an exciting show. So we're going to stay, you know, really tuned in and see what's going on. Let's add a comment right here. And that is, JG, if investors just keep chugging away, there's deals out there. Don't stay on the sidelines and ignore what's happening in real estate, because we do know that many are finding deals. They're staying engaged. They're they're not necessarily buying like chasing deals, but they're watching for the opportunities as the opportunities are starting to show up. The point is don't disconnect from what's happening in the real estate market. You're going to miss some great deals. If you like what you learned here, go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter, where you can 
Also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses. If you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.